All right. I want to make sure we execute this uh, this particular segment perfectly. Okay. Oh, well, we're going to execute it. All right. <laughs> I was told by you during the break. Um, you read the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Do you know how I will, from time to time, I have a propensity to butcher a stat. Well, let's talk about how this came about first, because Aaron Maloney did all the work while running our show. So yes. I'm, I'm reading numbers that she put together. I didn't yes. do any of this. But how did we even get to this point in prehab? I, I believe that I said, man, wouldn't it be interesting to actually compare the rookie season of Marvin Harrison Jr. to the rookie season of Larry Fitzgerald? Is that the way it went down, Mel? Is that the way you're remembering it? Yeah, you said, wouldn't it be cool to see the difference yes, in their rookie seasons? Exactly, side by side. Because I knew that Larry had a good year. But he, he didn't light it up, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So that's exactly what Mel did. Yeah, so par- partially <laughs> the part that you left out, when we were talking, you're talking about, you know, there's Marv getting a lot of criticism, and Marv's been up and down. And Marv yeah. does have seven touchdowns now, which you can't just write that off. Um, but, you know, we were going back and forth, and I asked you, like, was, was Fitz as a rookie? Already at the point where if you throw the ball anywhere near him, he's going to come down with it. Because by, what, year two, year three of his career, he was one of the best ever at it. And he just maintained that forever. Um, so we, you're, we're comparing him to one of the best receivers on the very short list ever. Yes. And you also have to remember as well, they have these, oh, man, next-gen stats, mm-hmm. right? Next-gen stats where these guys, are all, all these players, they're wearing these devices, of course, that are being recorded. As they go out and play in next gen stats, very, very cool stuff comes out of there. But one of them is separation yards. Separation yards for a wide receiver. How much separation does a wide receiver get when he's playing against a corner? How much does he get? And, um, you know, the, of course, the, the new age and the new mind that is out there, there's a lot of these people who love that. See that? That's what separates wide receivers. Separation, literally. And yet at the same time, um, I knew that Larry Fitzgerald, it wasn't Larry's game to get great separation. Mm -mm. It was Larry's game to run great routes. And catch everything. And catch everything that came (laughs) around him. That's what Larry Fitzgerald did. He didn't get a lot of separation. It's one of the reasons why we wanted to look at the stats and compare them rookie to rookie let us be real we're all comparing marvin harrison jr to larry fitzgerald as we watch these games so that's what everybody was doing whether you wanted to or not going into the season if you're a cardinals fan i don't think they're doing it in new york but if you're a cardinals fan you're watching marvin you're saying okay man i really thought this guy was going to be fitz and so that's why you and i were kind of like well what was fitz as a rookie he was outstanding but like what were his actual numbers because marv's numbers are kind of they're they're very up and down so aaron literally went through game by game and gave targets, receptions, yards, touchdowns, and catch percentage for each game in the rookie season. (laughs) So do you just – here, I'll just give you this, and we can work from here. This is through the first 12 games of their NFL career, okay? Through the first 12 games? Yes. Okay, so it's game for game. Yes. Okay. Uh, Targets, Fitz had 86. Marv has 78. Catches, Fitz had 43. Marv has 41. Wow. Yards, Fitz had 590, Marv has 606. Touchdowns, Fitz had four, Marv has seven. And the one that really actually is interesting to me is, uh, or most interesting, I should say, Larry Fitzgerald's catch percentage. So, you know, receptions on targets. There's yes. a lot that goes into that. Some yes. of them could have been bad right. passes. Yes. Or whatever. Yes. His was 50% through his first 12 games. Marv's is 52.6%. So, you know, once again, there's a lot that goes into that. Who knows what it is? But what you're saying is Marvin Harrison Jr. actually has a better percentage chance of actually recording a reception based on targets. Numbers so far through the first 12 games. Now, we got to stress that. Like, you could 43 catches on 86 targets for Fitz doesn't mean he dropped 43 passes. I'm not sure he ever dropped a pass. Yes. But the whole point of of this, at least for me, was is Marv – way off or is he close now the th- the part that doesn't isn't accounted for here that we all have to make the jump our, ourselves mentally and it shouldn't be hard to do Fitz just took off and became one of seriously the three best receivers in NFL history <laughs> so Marv this doesn't mean Marv's gonna take off and the do guy that. from Pitt just took off and suddenly <laughs> destroyed everybody but but if if you're watching these games like man Marv's already a bust 
Yeah, it's a little early to say Marv's a bust. Yeah. Um, he, here's the other thing about it, too. There's a lot of people that are saying, well, Wolf, it was Josh McCown throwing him the football at that point. And so, first of all, I thought Josh McCown was a, a capable NFL quarterback. What? Did I see McCown on the sidelines on Sunday? Was I, he? I think so. Yeah. Is yeah he, I he's, think so. There's like seven Josh McCowns. Yeah, I, absolutely. Okay. It's very interesting you, you bring that up, but... Once again, um, I would also say this. The the one thing, Michael Wilson, I love Michael Wilson. I think Michael Wilson is having a good year and is producing. Um, but listen, Kyler Murray is not Josh McCown, and Josh McCown is not Kyler Murray. I, I think Kyler Murray has a, a much better grasp over playing the quarterback position than Josh McCown had. Mm -hmm. That's just me. Yeah, okay, fair. and I think – He's played a lot more games, obviously, and had a lot more exposure to defensive coordinators. But I would also throw in here that Larry Fitzgerald did have Anquan Bolden as well on the other side of the field. And it's true. that Anquan Bolden, we all know Quan. The Quan came in in 2003 and blew it up. Larry came in 2004 and blew it up with him. They both were feeding off each other. And right now, I don't think Marvin Harrison Jr., quite has um, some of the other goodness around him. Yeah, I, I think that's all fair. And we'll we'll do this again later on in the show. But I just, at least to put a bow on it for this segment, and I'm not going to speak for you, Wolf, but for me, I'm not saying Marvin Harrison Jr. is Larry Fitzgerald or yeah. is going to be Larry oh, Fitzgerald. Yeah. And, no, no way. You can't even say in, that. In fact, you know, if you want to play the percentages, yes. he's not going to be. Yeah. Uh, Marv could have a great, Marv could have a Hall of Fame career and not be as good as Larry Fitzgerald. This, to me, was more just there are people now like, well, he's a bust. And, and I, I will grant you, he has not been consistent in these games, and it doesn't feel like they can go to him consistently, but he has played 12 NFL games. And so I appreciate Aaron doing this because it, it helps me at least to be able to look and say through 12 games, Marv actually has 16 more yards and three more catches and a higher or three more touchdowns and a higher catch percentage than Larry Fitzgerald. Yeah. Because that, to me, shows that Marv isn't a bust 12 games into his NFL career. No, no way. Thanks for watching Wolf and Luke. Tap to see more and click the button in the middle to subscribe to Arizona Sports.